Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to Zoom Transitions. And this is a new modifier that we can apply to a navigation destination or a full screen cover sheet that uses a matched geometry effect to zoom out and then back in again to the matched content. I love getting your feedback, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Make sure you ring the bell to enable notifications and get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. A link is in the description. There is a starter project for this video, and you can download it from the link in the description. There are two branches, so make sure you download the main branch for this project, as that has the starter resources. The complete project branch contains the completed source code for the video. Just download and expand the zipped archive. The project does require Xcode 16, and at the time of this recording, I'm running Xcode Beta 3. The project has no real code at all, so we'll be building out a simple application so that we can explore Zoom transition options that were introduced in iOS 18. In the Assets folder, you can see that I have a number of images, and all these images were taken by me, so there's no copyright issues. Each photo was taken when I was either on vacation or out for a walk. And the asset name is the image name that we'll use in our code. I've also created a data model called myImage that's an identifiable struct and it's hashable, as hashable will be a requirement. And it has four properties the ID for identifiable, along with three string properties for image name, name, and info. And I've created a static array of these myImage objects called samples that use the image and provide a location name and some information about that location. Well, before I start, I want to do a couple of housekeeping things in my project. Right now, if I try to rearrange the files here, I can't. I like to have my assets and preview content at the bottom and my code files at the top, starting with the app file, then the content view. And the reason I can't is that now, by default in Xcode 16, when you create a new project, the project folder is created as a folder and not a group. So I'm going to go and right click on it and convert it to a group. And that's going to allow me to move the content items around as I just described. Next, I'm going to change the content view's name to Photo Grid View. And then I'm going to select the file and add it to a group that I'm going to call Views. And I'm also going to create a group by selecting the My Image file and create a new group from selection and call it Models. So let's start building out our app. And it's going to be a simple photo grid view on our opening view, but I want it to be inside a navigation stack. So first, let's create a property called Columns. And I'm going to initialize it as an array of grid item using adaptive with a minimum of 175. Now I can change the V stack to a navigation stack, and then for its contents, create a scroll view. And I'm going to add a navigation title using the string My Images. I'll add some padding to the scroll view. And then I'm going to ignore the safe areas, but only for the bottom edges. Next, within the scroll view, I'm going to create a lazy V grid using those columns. And I'm going to add a spacing of 20. Then I'm going to use a for each loop to iterate over the my image samples array. And that'll give us a photo that we can display in our grid. So I'm going to create an image using the photo's image name, and that'll give us that asset. I'll make it resizable, scale to fit. I'll set the frame to a width and height of 175. I'll apply a clip shape of a rounded rectangle 
with a corner radius of 10. And then I'll give it a shadow with a radius of 5. This doesn't look right. Uh, okay, this should be scaled to fill, not fit. Now my plan in this first stage is to be able to tap on one of these images and transition using a navigation link to a detail view that will display the image in full screen. So in the view folder, I'm going to create a new file from template and I'm going to call it detail view. This view will get the image injected via the navigation link, so I'm going to create a property for that. Image that will be of type my image. Then in the preview, we could use any one of our sample images from that array. So for example, the first one of my images samples at the zero index. Next in the body, I'll create an image using the image's image name. I'm going to make it resizable, scale to fill, but I'm going to ignore all safe areas here. So I can return to the photo's grid view now, and instead of displaying the image as is, I want to display it as a navigation link where the value is the photo and the label is the image. So I find it easier first to just cut this label content out first. Then I can create the navigation link with the value photo, and then with the label, I can just paste in that content that I just cut out. And now that we have a navigation link, we can attach a navigation destination modifier to the school view using a navigation destination for our hashable my image type dot self. And that's going to provide us with an image that we can pass on to the destination view, which is our detail view. Now, since this is a trailing closure, I can clean this up. Now, if you don't understand how I'm doing this with trailing closures, I really recommend you watch my Understanding Swift Trailing Closure Syntax video. Well, there's nothing new here. When I tap on the image, we navigate to our destination view and we see that the back button is actually displaying over the view, but it's not very clear, especially over blue sky. So before I get to the point of this video, let me do one more thing here in detail view. I'm going to hide the navigation back bar button. And then I'm going to create a toolbar. And within the toolbar, I'm going to create a button where the label is an image using the system name xmark.circle.fill. I'll set the font to a title size and apply a foreground style of white. Now this view has no idea that it's being presented in a navigation stack, so we don't see that button. So what we can do though is embed the preview in a navigation stack. And now I see it. So we can now create an environment variable for the dismiss key path, and I'll call it dismiss. And then we can call the dismiss function in our buttons action. Now, I want this photo grid view to be the first view in this views group, but it appears that I made this a folder instead. So let me change this now so I can rearrange the files as I like them. This year, we are giving a new zoom transition modifier that we can apply to our navigation transition. And this works a lot like the match geometry effect that we have already. I have a video on this topic, and I'll leave a link in the description. What we need to do is to create a namespace property that will allow us to define what views have to be matched during the transition. So let's create a new property in the photo grid view that uses the at namespace property wrapper, and I'm going to call it transition namespace. The source item that we want to match is the image. So attach to the image a matched transition source modifier. And the ID will be the photo image itself. And the namespace ID is our namespace property. 
And then in the navigation destination where we have our detail view, we'll want the entire image taking over the screen. So we can apply the transition type using a navigation transition modifier and it'll accept a style. Now there is automatic and zoom and automatic is what we have right now. So let's choose zoom and it's asking for a hashable source ID and that will be our image that we're passing in and the namespace will be our transition namespace. Now, when we tap on an image, you see that it zooms to the full screen detail view. This is nice. And if you tap the close button, you see the reverse, that it zooms right back to where it started. Well, you can also, when you're in the detail view, swipe from the top or the leading edge to dismiss it. And you get that lovely transition. Let's create another detail view to see how it looks if we don't go full screen. So let's create a new file from template and we'll call it detail view two. This view will also receive an image like the other one. So an image, which is a my image property. But this time we're going to be passing in the namespace as I want to apply that modifier here in this view rather than in the navigation destination. So we'll need to create a namespace property for that, which we can pass in. And its type is the namespace dot capital ID. And I'm going to use the same name as we used in our grid view, the transition namespace. Well, the preview is going to complain because it needs both the image and the namespace. So we can use the same image or any image from our sample array as we did in the last view. So how about the one at index six? but the namespace ID is a property wrapper. So this here in uh, Xcode 16 has become much easier for us. We can use the new at previewable macro, and then we can create a local namespace property using the namespace property wrapper. And then we can use that local transition namespace in our detail view to in the preview. So for the body, then let's create a V stack and we'll add some padding. As the first element in the V stack, I'm going to create an image using the images image name. I'll make it resizable, scale to fit. I'll apply a frame where the max width is infinity, but I'm going to then apply a clip shape using a rounded rectangle with a quarter radius of 20. And then I'll apply a shadow with a radius of 10. Below the image, I'll create a text view displaying the image name. And I'll apply a font of title. I'll follow this with another text view displaying the image info. And then Apply a spacer to push the content up to the top. Well, this is our destination, so we can apply our navigation transition modifier to anywhere within the hierarchy. So I'm going to attach it here to the VStack itself. We'll use the zoom option, where the source ID will be the image that we've passed in, and the transition namespace will be our namespace. Back in the photos grid view, let's allow our users to choose which destination they want to go to. So let's create a Boolean state property called full option, and we'll initialize it as true. And so when it's true, we'll display the original detail view. And if it's false, we'll display the detail view too, that new one that we just created. So above the scroll view, I'll create a picker using the string choose but it'll be bound to this full option state property. And then in the view builder closure here, we'll create two text views. The first one will be the string full, where the tag is true. And then the second will be another text view using the string detail, 
and the tag will be false. Then in our navigation destination, this current destination is only the case if we have full option being true. Else, we'll display our detail to view and we'll pass in the image and this time we'll pass in the transition namespace. So when it's set to full, we get that first detail view displayed just as we had before. However, when we change to the second option, we are taken to the detail to view. Notice that I have left the back button this time. And if we tap the back button, it zooms back to the source. However, we can still do that swipe from the top or the leading edge too to dismiss the navigation destination view. Well, the zoom transition works not only for navigation stacks, but it also works with modal sheets. Let's say, for example, that if we're in that detail two view and we see that image at the top, I might want to tap on it to get to that full screen version that we saw in our first detail view. Well, we can do that by reusing that namespace to make it our source in this view. And that's the one that we passed in. So we're going to attach the image, a match transition source modifier, where the ID is the image and the namespace is that transition namespace. So in order to present a sheet, I'll need a Boolean property for is presented. So I'll create a state private property called show full and I'll initialize it as false. And then to trigger this presentation, I'll attach an on tap gesture to the image. And the action for this on tap gesture will be to toggle the show full. Next, I can create a sheet, but I'll need to use a full sheet cover where is presented is bound to show full. And then we can present the detail view, the original one, passing in the image. And then, just as we did in the first instance, we can apply the navigation transition of type zoom where the source ID is our image in that transition namespace. So if we go to the grid view, we can test this out for our info option. Tapping on the grid item, it takes us to our info view. Then tapping on that image, zooms to a full screen modal with our detail view, but there's no dismiss button because we're not coming from a navigation stack. However, I could swipe from the top edge to dismiss, but because this is a modal sheet, we can't swipe from the leading edge, only from the top edge, but that's not very intuitive. So I'd like to get that button back. And we can easily fix this missing dismiss button by wrapping our presentation view in a navigation stack. We just have to make sure that we don't include the transition. Testing out now. It's exactly what I want. Well, that's it for this video. And I hope that you've learned something new that you can use in your projects going forward. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and enable notifications so that you are made aware of new videos that I release. And you can also download my free channel listing app to be able to search for and find content from any one of my over 300 Swift and SwiftUI related videos. Thanks for watching.